Hey guys, it's Agonzi Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on augmented reality. In this video, we're going to start looking into solutions to be able to save our anchors to the cloud. One of the solutions that I found was Azure Spatial Anchors. I'm going to be walking you through what to do on the portal. I'm also going to be showing you the demo that you see behind the scenes, which is actually a demo where they allow you to select different experiences based on what you're looking for, either saving an anchor, looking at location-based anchors, looking at different neighbors and locations that we actually previously set to be able to restore them and actually download them from the cloud. So I'm going to jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys, so I want to show you a demo that Azure created for Unity developers so you know how to integrate this package into Unity. So this is a basic demo I'm going to walk you through, and also we're going to be looking at a location-based one. So this one is actually going to allow you to create an anchor. You can place what's called an anchor, and if you're using our foundation, that's referred as a reference point in previous versions. So I can save it, and this, at this point it's going to save it. Now the device is you know, telling it to scan it to go around so that it has more information on where to place it. Now we can stop the session, it's going to remove it, it's going to try to query it from the cloud, and it's looking for the anchor based on the space, and you can see that it added back in the same location. So that actually did an HTTP query, got the information, and then downloaded it and put it in the same location. This other demo that I'm gonna show you, it's more of a location type experience, and this one's really cool because it uses either geolocation, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and you can also go ahead and use plane detection, just like I showed you before. So it's configuring the sensors. I place an anchor on the scene, and you can see that I can place it anywhere I want. I, I was just trying to play with the planes to see if it worked. I can also save it to the cloud, just like it says. And then I got to scan it and make sure that it knows the location. And then it's going to tell me, OK, I'm going to stop it, because it's going to remove it. So this means that it's going to try to get it from the cloud. It's looking for anchors that are near the device. And before I did this, I actually placed another anchor just to see if it was gonna work. And you're gonna you're gonna get surprised by by this. So there's one of them, and then there's gonna be another one here. And at some point, I think yeah, I found two anchors, so it has there's another anchor here. So that part all works. I found another anchor, and I didn't even anticipate to do a demo like that. So I have the project. I made some tweaks to the project. I'm gonna walk you through all the different steps. So the next thing that I want to look at is going to be some of the things that we're going to be going through. And I created a little readme file so that we could go through some of the examples. So what we need to do first is we need to set up what's called an expatial anchor resource in Azure. I'm going to be walking you through that. We're going to be copying basically API keys. We're going to be cloning a project, which is a project that I have, but I want to show you how to do that. We're also going to be making sure that we have Cocoa Pods installed because some of the components that the Unity 3D project, the exported Xcode project will require, are all in, in pod. So we need to basically run this command to get the additional requirements that the X project is going to need. Once we have that going, we can basically just build the, build the project to our device. But we're going to be installing the pods first. And then we're going to be opening the project in Xcode and then building it to the device. So which I already did because I show you at the beginning of the video. But I'm going to be walking you through everything anyways. So let's go ahead and jump into Google and actually right here. I'm going to so you're gonna go into portal that azure.com and we can just go to the root so I can walk you through everything. And it's gonna take you to something you know like what you see right right now. If you don't have an account with you know with Azure yet just go ahead and create an account. They're going to require that you register and I had to register and basically I'm paying as I go. I'm using that model basically every every request that I make to Azure I'm gonna get charged so far I haven't gotten charged and I've been using it all day so we'll see what the surprise is tomorrow once I get the bill but for the most part I think it's going to be okay for for us that are doing a demo I think we should be okay but anyways going back to what we need to do so you're gonna go into all resources you can see the resource that I have right now it's called learn XR special and this is what we're gonna be creating but I'm gonna show you how it looks so that you understand what we're looking at. And you can look at what time I created the anchor. So this one shows that at 10.36, I actually created three different anchors. It also show that at, let's see, at 11.07, I created two anchors because I was doing different te testing. I can also see how many anchors I'm deleting. So I can look at the anchors deleted, how many anchors were updated, if I was updating anything, 
and then any poses found, which I haven't really gone through that, so I'll be explaining what that means. I can also see what the you know what the account ID is in my case, and I'm gonna be deleting this anyway. So even if anybody gets a hold of this, I'm not really worried about because this is gonna go it's gonna go away anyway. So then the next thing that we need to do is basically actually create a resource like this so you can call it from within the Unity project. So I'm gonna go back into resources. I'm not gonna be using this one, we're gonna be creating a brand new one because that's what you're gonna to have to do when you go through this process. I'm gonna click on add and then you're gonna be searching for a special. And when you do that, it's going to basically just show you a lot of different things that you can use. I'm going to be using the Microsoft Expatial Anchor, so I'm just going to click on it. It's going to give you an overview and also the plans and you know additional information that I haven't really gone through, to be honest. All I did was just click on Create. And then it's going to tell you what subscription you want to attach it to. In my case, it's just Dilmer subscription. I pay as I go. And then the resource name, I'm just going to call it YouTube Expatial Anchors. And this can just be, you know, anything that you want to identify as this being your resource. You can call it a special service. You can call it your company, a special anchor. So it's just, you know, a unique name that we need to identify. And then you also need to specify a resource group. If you don't have a resource group, just create one. It's just a way to group resources together. And I also need to specify the location. It looks like this is only available in, e in East US too. So I'm just going to select that. You're going to click on New. And it's going to give you kind of like an error and then it goes away and I think that's a bug on their end. But it actually works really well. It's going to deploy it. It's all automated. You know, deploy is complete. You can see, you can click on download. It'll give you additional information. I didn't really look at any of these. All I know is like it deployed the service that I'm building and it put it somewhere in the world. Well, I guess it did it on East US. So it put it on East US too. And then, which is on the east side of US, so that's all I know, and that's all I really care. I really need to know what server it, it, it is on. I just need to know that it was put somewhere and we're gonna be able to use it. So now that we have that, how, quick, how can we access a resource so that we can look at it? So you can click on this All Resources button. You're gonna see that now I have two different resources. I have one that I created before this video to test, to make sure that everything was gonna work. And I also have one that we just created, which is the YouTube special, special anchor. So if I collapse this, you can see that we have, you know, we haven't created any anchors. We haven't deleted anything. I haven't updated anything. And also I don't have any poses. I do have an account ID, and this is something that we need to, we need to keep track of because Unity is going to require that we do that for the demo project. And also for any projects that you create using this technology, you're gonna need the account ID. And you're also going to be needing the account key which is gonna be that key. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and go back into my readme here and I'm gonna say, okay, copy the account ID. So we did this part, this is done. Now what we need to do is copy the account ID and primary key. And of course you wouldn't wanna store this somewhere that people could get a hold of. This is just for demonstration purposes. And then I also need to copy the primary key. So I know that this one is the account ID. I know that this one, you can also just type it out if it makes sense to you. So. Those are those two, so now what we need to do is just clone the actual project. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And I already cloned it, but I want to show you anyways. I already have it in a different directory, as you can see right here. But I'm gonna put it right here in a YouTube directory so that we, you guys know what we're doing. The other ways, like if you don't want to clone it like this, you can also go to GitHub and just download it as a zip file, and, and or you can do HTTPS, you can also do that. So in my case, I think I doing it this way, it's easier because I use Git, but if you don't use Git, you can just go to that location. It's gonna take you to the project. You can just click on this button and then download it as a zip. And then you don't need to set up keys or anything, you know, in regards to Git. I'm really familiar with it, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the Git way. So otherwise you can use the other option. It's gonna click on create on clone. It's going to download all the code and and the entire project, and I could actually just open this in code, and you're gonna see that the whole project got cloned, all the examples, and there are HoloLens examples, iOS examples, and also Unity examples in that GitHub project. And if I click on Assets, you're gonna see that there's just you know a lot of things available in here that you can access. In my case, what we need to do is you need to go to the, let me see if I can find it, yep, Azure Spatial Anchors. But you're gonna be opening this in Unity. Don't open it the way that I'm opening. I just wanna show you for demonstration purposes. The way that you're gonna open this up is going to be in Unity. But if you wanted to modify this asset, you can also, you actually need to modify it in Unity. 
because this one is going to be an scriptable object. So we're going to go ahead and do it in Unity. Just know that this got clone and all the information is going to be there. It's going to go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and open it in Unity, which I already added it as a project. So as you can see, this one is using my Unity one, which I already cloned previously. I don't want to take the time, you know, opening and, and importing the file. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this one so I can show you, which is going to be the one that I already have here. So all you really need to do to if I if you didn't have these before, like I did, you can just click on add and then locate the, you know, the location where you put it. I put it in YouTube. That's where we clone it. You can go into that directory and then go into Unity and then just click on open and it's going to go ahead and open in the in Unity. It's going to add it here and then you can click on it just like I, I can do and then and then it'll open the Unity project. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and go ahead and open the Unity project. So it's going to give you this. The UI is a little bit uh, ugly on the on the version that they posted. I just cleaned it up because I didn't really like the colors that they had. They they just they just didn't really do a good job. I think they probably didn't spend any time on the UI. But anyways, this looks a little better. And what you need to do to get it going, then you need to go into the SDK folder here, which is the Azure Spatial Anchors SDK. You're gonna go into Resources. You're gonna go into this, and you can see that I already have those keys selected. Make sure that you have this set to API key. This is gonna be the account ID key. So. Normally when you clone it, it's not going to have anything and because I already did this, it has it already. But I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time. So you can just paste that and then we're going to be pasting this. So that's really all we need to do there. The other thing that I would recommend that you do as well so that you don't run into problems like I did, make sure that you set it to iOS. That's the other thing that you need to have. If, it, if it's not that target already, make sure that you switch to it and then click on player settings. The other thing that I had to do to, because this had a very long bundle identifier, and because I'm using my own provisioning profile, I'm using com.dilmarigames, and I just give it a name. It, it needs to be unique, you know, for your, based on your profile in, you know, in iOS, in the App Store portal. So in my case, this works for me, so make sure you make it unique so that it works for your organization. Once you get that going, you can also modify the version, the bill, and then, you know, the signing team and also the names if you want to change it. I left those default so that I could just, you know, test it. The other things that I also noted that were important here is the camera usage. This is important because we're using air tracking. So you're going to need to get permission for the camera to be able to use AR. So make sure this is populated with something. And then because some of the experiences are going to require your location, you're going to need that information so that the the iOS operating system actually allows you to use that feature. Basically going to prompt the user and saying, okay, do you want to give your location to the user? And then the user is going to say yes or no. And, and if they say yes, then you can use that feature. So that it's something that is really important. The other option that is really, really important that you said it's going to be this one because we are requesting information from the cloud, meaning that we're going over HTTP and we, I think we're actually going over HTTPS. I hope we're going over HTTPS. But this is just saying, you know, allow downloads over HTTP. And I think it's a little bit misleading. It's just saying, let's go ahead and allow you to talk to the HTTP protocol. And that is required because you're going to be talking to a cloud. So make sure you set that. And then require ARKit support. Of course, it's going to be required. So look at some of these settings and make sure that you match them with your own experience. And then the next thing that you need to do is just go ahead and build it. So you can just go into build settings, build, and then you know, you select the folder, hit build, and it's going to create something like this. I'm not going to go through that because hopefully by now you have looked at many of my videos where I go through that. If not, go ahead and look at some of my previous videos on AR Foundation where I go through that process. And so now that you have that, let me show you what else you need to do. So if we go back into my instructions here. So we went through here and created a resource. We also copy the account ID primary key. We clone the project, we copy these two keys into our new project in Unity. By this point, we should have a project created, right? Because we build it. So here, there's a step that says, you know, build, oh, which is the one that, that goes next. So it's actually right here, but you need to make sure that you have pot, Cocoa Pots installed. So one way to check, especially in Mac, you have to just, you know, type in POD. And this is going to be Mac because we're building for iOS. So make sure that you do have a Mac when you're doing this. Otherwise, you're going to be using the, you know, the other experiences for, in my case, we're using it for iOS. So this tutorial is more 
you know, focus on the iOS world, but if you type in pods and it has it, that means that you have it installed. If you type in pods and it doesn't have those commands, it, you, you get like a command cannot be found or something like that. I think it gives you, yeah, a CSH command not found. And in your case, it's gonna be, it's gonna say pod, right? So what you need to do is just go ahead and run this command and that's going to install Cocoa Pods. And then to test it, just, you know, type in pod and that's going to make it work. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to go into the directory where we actually build it to. So if I go ahead and go back into my desktop, you're gonna see that I have the special anchors build, which, you know, it would be the folder that you basically designated for your build. So in my case, I need to go into that directory and then you need to run this command. This command is gonna say, you know what, Xcode project, if you have any pods that are required, make sure they, they get installed into this Xcode, Xcode project. So in my case, I already did it. So it just says there's one dependency from the pod file. And this actually has a pod file inside that goes through and, and basically determine what kind of information it needs to download. And I'm not gonna go through that because I didn't actually even look at it. I just followed the instructions from Azure and everything just works. So then you need to just run that command. And then what this command is gonna do is it's gonna show you the Xcode project go into general, make sure that everything here is set up correctly, such as the display name, the bundle identifier, the version, and then go into signing and capabilities and make sure that your team is selected correctly. So you shouldn't have any errors in here or warnings. It needs to look like this and be clean. Of course, it's gonna ha it's not gonna have my team, it's gonna have your team and also your own bundle identifier. But other than that, that's everything that you need to do in order to get it working. So if you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, I'm also going to be putting this information in basically in Git so you guys can access it and also a link to the documentation that Azure provides so that you guys have that as a reference. So again, thank you very much. And if you guys have additional questions, please let me know. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video on Azure Spatial Anchors. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also make sure to check out LearnXR.io, which is my new VR training. And also it's going to become an augmented reality training platform. For now, I just have VR training, but I'm really, really excited about it. And I hope a lot of you join. Also make sure to find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting early access source code and also additional information about videos that I'm gonna be creating. Thank you very much, guys.